Welcome to this episode of the Esports Detective Podcast Show. My name is James Williams, and today Samuel L. Jackson is not happy with ESPN's Bird Tarasi alternate broadcast. So Samuel L. Jackson, in case you guys didn't know, because I didn't know this, he is a huge college basketball fan, or at least he, you know, keeps in touch with the sport. You know, he's not just like a March Madness guy. You see him on the uh, March Madness commercials, the Capital One commercials. But a few months ago, I saw him just tweet randomly on like a Saturday was been watching uh, the men's Kansas game and basically tweeted out uh, Hunter Dickinson on Kansas flops like an mf -er. So that was the first thing that I noticed that like, hey, Samuel Jackson, he's a fan of college basketball. He loves the sport. And he must have been watching or he was watching the uh, the women's national championship on Sunday. And him, like me, was spent a little bit of time watching the ESPN broadcast, the Bird Tarasi broadcast. And he was, Samuel Jackson was not happy with what he saw. I'll go ahead and share these two tweets from Samuel Jackson here talking about the broadcast. So this is the first tweet from him here. Who the F ESPN thought this podcast commentary is a good idea? Question mark, question mark, exclamation point, exclamation point. I never knew I needed an ABC feed before. Um, I'll get to what he's talking about here in a second, but I'll go ahead and also show you this uh, the second tweet here from uh, Samuel Jackson. And this must have came in the second quarter. I'll get to why that probably came in the second quarter here in a second. So this is the second tweet. Uh, it's okay to talk about the team that's winning too. That is clearly commenting on the, uh, the bird Tarasi broadcast because I was watching that. And part of the reason I watched it is because they kind of went viral, uh, you know, during the UConn game because they're both UConn people, Bird and Tarasi are. And basically they were kind of, it was kind of funny because they, you know, the, there was the controversial, you know, screenplay at the end of that game. And basically all of them were like being like, well, bad call, bad call, bad call. And it's like, was it probably a bad call? Yeah. But it's like, I saw someone tweet like them in the video. It was just like three UConn players. <laughs> There's no bias there at all, <laughs> but I wanted to talk about that too. Cause you would think when you see that tweet there from Samuel Jackson, just blindly not knowing if you weren't watching that broadcast, you're like, Oh, they're probably just, you know, hamming it up about Caitlin Clark the whole time, because that's what everyone wants to talk about. That's what everyone wants to hear. If you watch that broadcast, I watched that broadcast. I caught, you know, a little bit of the end of the first quarter and I caught maybe half of the second quarter. They just were not talking about Iowa at all. They were just not. And if they did, they they like Tarasi had like a jab or two at Caitlin Clark. Nothing like too crazy, but it, it was definitely a thing where it's like, you know, there's some animosity there. And there's definitely like some dismissiveness with Caitlin Clark. And the fact that like, I don't know if it's a UConn thing, that the fact that they just beat their team and maybe there was a thing where they didn't think UConn was there. But this is a thing that has been going on with, uh, you know, the the women's players, former women's players, and Caitlin Clark. It's been a very kind of weird thing that has been going on. We had the thing like a, a month and a half ago with Cheryl Swoops where she said that the Caitlin Clark scoring record, if she broke it, it was before she broke it, if she ended up breaking it, it really didn't count because she had an extra COVID year, which is absolutely just not true. It's not true. She's only played four years of college, and she started after the COVID year would have been. So, cause she started in 21. Uh, so it was just like, it was just a really weird, I don't know if you call it a jab or just being just, you know, ignorant to like, what is actually what her career actually is. And then you had, um, Lynette Woodward. Uh, I, I don't know what exactly the, the ceremony that she had was. I, I, I thought I saw a hall of fame thing, believe it or not, I wasn't watching it, but I saw the clip that went viral, uh, Sunday morning before the uh, national championship game where she's basically like, being very dismissive, you know, publicly in like a speech about Caitlin Clark's scoring record being like, Hey, when I broke the record, I did it with a men's ball and I did it with no three point line. And basically kind of like, if you, if you listen to the video, it basically sounded like she's just like, yeah, I don't think her scoring record counts. And then she did ended up doing an apology uh, later where she was just like, Hey, Caitlin Clark is the scoring leader, but I also meant everything I said. So it was just one of those weird apologies where it's just like, where it's just like, I apologize, but I also mean everything I say. So it was one of those stupid things. We'll digress from that point. Um, and this was kind of like a, a thing that really got on my radar is like, huh, 
why, and this is the thing that a lot of people were saying online, was kind of like, hey, what is going on here? Why is there all of this dismissiveness? Why do a lot of people just hate Caitlin Clark for like clearly no reason? And before people, I, there's a reason I have this thing behind me on, on my left shoulder. Um, I I went to the school and I've been cheering for the school my whole life. That is Caitlin Clark's team's state rival. So I'm not some sort of Caitlin Clark like Stan or anything like that. Um, so I wanted to point that out here before people, that's why I've had it back there if you didn't notice it by now. But it was kind of like a lot of people were saying like, oh, wait a second. Well, what, what, why is Caitlin Clark receiving all this hate, especially from like former players who you think would be like overly hyped about Caitlin Clark? She, she's bringing all of this attention. Now, it's not all her. Maybe you don't want to give it 100% her, but she is bringing a lot of people that – might not have even ever watched college basketball, let alone women's college basketball to a TV screen to watch, you know, the event that, that she is. And you're seeing, uh, you know, the final four ticket prices are, you know, in person are way more than the men's war. And, you know, all this stuff is just positive for forwarding the women's game and, you know, making it more, um, you know, recognizable and having more people just more invested in it. So it's kind of like, what, well, why is there this hate? And Ryan Rosillo, in his sarcastic fashion, I think summed it up perfectly online. Again, this is a sarcastic tweet from Ryan Rosillo. I'll explain why here in a second. This is what Rosillo tweeted uh, Sunday, you know, like was this 40 minutes before tip off of the, the game. The This Caitlin Clark story is crazy because in the NBA, the previous generations are very supportive and positive about the current players. Obviously, Rosillo there being incredibly sarcastic because if you know anything about NBA commentary and NBA, you know, discussions with former players, every single player that played in their, you know, decade, let's say, if you played in the mid 2000s, you think that was the best time to be an NBA player. And, and you think that that the people, the players today could not could never imagine playing in, in, your, in uh, their day. Same thing with the guys that played in the 90s. Same thing with the guys that played in the 80s. And this has been kind of like a back and forth that's been going on. Um, with players today, with players with their previous generations, where a lot of times those former players can sometimes be dismissive of the former guys. And you'll see the podcast clips on your Instagram reels or whatever, or YouTube shorts, where it's like a, a, from a podcast where guys like, oh man, you know, if Jordan played today, man, he'd be averaging like 55 and things like that. Um, and the reason I point that out too is because, you know, this has been a thing that this isn't just a recent phenomenon where people have microphones now and, you know, we just see more of this stuff where people actually have an audience to talk about it. Because I read this book four years ago. It's called Loose Balls by Terry Pluto. It's about the uh, it's an oral history of the ABA it came out in the mid 90s or early 90s. And it was really funny to kind of read that book a few years ago. And to hear the players talk about the comparisons between their game in the 70s and the, the ABA league in the 70s and, you know, George's generation that was just coming up in like the early 90s. And basically it was really funny to read about it because it was the same exact thing that people in the 90s were talking about the people in the 2010s where it was just like, oh, man, you know, this Jordan guy, everyone thinks he's so great, but psh, he couldn't play in our game, bro. He's too soft, bro. He's too soft, man. He couldn't play in the 70s, man. We'd rough him up too much. We'd rough him up too much. Oh, I, you know, I'm getting it, man. He's a pretty good player, but he's no Dr. J. Does he know? Do, do you guys know who David Thompson is? Skywalker? And it was just really funny to read because it's like, oh, this is the same thing that has been going on for generations. And it's going to keep going on for generations. And it's something that... uh. It also happens in the women's game, too. The weird thing, too, about this, too, just to add another point here before I'm probably going to wrap up here in the next minute or so, is this only happens in basketball. I don't know enough about, like, baseball discourse, and baseball discourse is also, like, really kind of, like, crazy, too, because you have, like, the steroid era, obviously, and that kind of, like, affects, you know, how we talk about different generations. But I know, like, this isn't necessarily, like, a thing in football. Like, what if... What if Tom Brady like had his own alternate broadcast? Or I guess he's going to be uh, like a, a play-by-play guy now for Fox. But what if he's just like every time they're doing a Patrick Mahomes game, it's just being super dismissive of him. And it's just like it's it's Patrick Mahomes versus J.J. McCarthy in a game. And Tom Brady's only talking about how great J.J. McCarthy is. And he's just ignoring everything Patrick Mahomes is doing. 
that would basically be the same thing of what the Bird and Tarasi thing is here, too. Again, a little bit differently because that's a more traditional broadcast. But anyway, I just wanted to bring this uh, stuff and talk about it. This is just something that basketball players do. They're defensive of their generation. They're defensive of their school. And, you know, they're defensive of the time that they played. And it is going to... Uh, it is going to be interesting kind of to see, you know, uh, how I guess it'll be the last point that I make because I'm not sure is uh, just the fact that I, I I don't have the ratings for the national championship, but I know that the final the the elite eight game was crazy. I know the final four game was crazy ratings. It's going to be curious when Caitlin Clark goes to the NBA because a lot of these ratings are for her like the. um was it the, I think it was the elite eight game where it was like 12 million people viewed that game, the Iowa LSU game, but then 50% of the people left for the second game. Uh, what was it? USC UConn. And um, it is going to be interesting too, that what do do these ratings and this popularity, does it translate to WNBA ratings or WNBA ticket sales? That is going to be something that is very interesting. I don't know yet. I'm not going to make any predictions for it, but this is something that could totally have a whole new boom for a sport where the 2020s WNBA could gain an incredible amount of interest. And that's a very much a good thing because I've been enjoying the women's college basketball tournament, you know, for the last few years, even before the Caitlin Clark thing. Um, but I haven't been, I, I don't pay that much attention to WNBA. So it's going to be very interesting to see what other people's viewing habits are as Caitlin Clark is now done with college basketball and she enters her WNBA career. So I wanted to leave that little, uh, tidbit at the end here, but if you got this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already. It helps us out tremendously in the algorithm. Uh, if you like this video, please go ahead, Explorer Sports Detective Podcast channel. You might find some other videos that you like. We talk all different types of sports, college football, college basketball, NBA, a little bit of NFL stuff here and there. But again, thank you very much for watching. I'll uh, talk to you next time.